focusing on the future creates anxiety. You you have started to think that you need to look a certain way, be financially stable. You're putting the pre-qualifications for an imaginary man, for him to choose you and for you to choose him. If you can succeed in business, if you can succeed at church, if you can succeed in friendship, You can succeed in love. And if you want to get out of entrapment, if you want to get out of this this feeling of not getting anywhere, we have to leave our past behind. It's a part of our story, but it no longer controls us. Hey, Wanted Woman, welcome back to another episode of The Love Lens. Make sure you take a moment and subscribe. Hit subscribe down below. Make sure that you don't miss any episode because at the end of the day, if you are out here in these dating and love streets, you're going to need to change your view on love one episode at a time. So today, what specifically we are talking about is this I'll be ready when syndrome. I'll be ready when. I I often hear from professional women, Coach Cass, I'll be ready to date when I get to this next business goal. I'll be ready when I adopt this baby. I'll be ready when I finish on this house. I'll be ready when. It's literally this idea of waiting to be ready. And there is a strong difference between what I call the waiting woman versus the wanted woman. So the waiting woman is often just waiting. She's waiting for life to happen for her when it comes to love. She's in hiding. She's wondering if love will ever happen, but she's not actually doing anything about it. This is another form of self-sabotage. You are waiting, stuck in your path, not really moving forward, not seeking the help that you need, the support that you need, thinking that you could do it all on your own, yet nothing is happening. I'll be ready when I lose this weight, fix my teeth, get this hair, right? Get this next degree, get this next upgrade. Sis, wanted women. Women achieving new triumphs every day. Wanted women mm, take action. Wanted women make a decision. They're not indecisive and wishy-washy. They make a decision and they stick to it. They they stick to their, they trust their gut instinct. Mm-hmm. They take action and join a community of love. So here are common traps of the I'll be ready when syndrome. One is feeling like you have to hit certain milestones to allow yourself to find love. After I've been through this many years of therapy, after I've bought my own house, my own car, after I've gotten my business off the ground, literally, you you have started to think that you need to look a certain way, be financially stable. It's like you, you're you you're putting the pre-qualifications for an imaginary man that didn't tell you you needed to have these things all in order for him to choose you and for you to choose him. These are all common traps keeping you single. How long have you been single? I want you to drop that in the comment section. How long have you been single? And is there anything that you want to do differently? So starting to embrace imperfection. How can you embrace your imperfection? Delving into the beauty of who you are, of bringing your whole self to a date, to a relationship authentically. When I would say bring about 90% of your whole self because it's a 10% crazy, on the first and second day, you could just leave that alone. Leave that at home. If you're a cornball, bring all your corny jokes, right? If you don't like heels, don't wear heels on the date because you looking like you're trudging down the hill. 
in Jamaica, you know, it's it's just not it's just not giving sexy, right? So you have to find and figure out ways. Look, right now I have on full flats, right? Me and heels, they don't just they just don't get along, according to my orthopedic doctor and, and these high knees that I got that I just found out about. But I digress. Anyway, so we want to talk about looking at embracing your imperfections. I want you to take time to think about the dates that you've been on or the men that you've dated. Has there been a commonality in their complaints? Has there been a commonality in their complaints? And when there's a commonality in the complaint, there is a trend here, sis, that might be saying, wake up and listen. So there may be some things that are within you that you can tweak. For instance, has someone ever said, oh, well, you're only about yourself? Are you? (laughs) Are you really only about yourself? Do you show that you care? And if you feel like, oh, well, I care. Well, how would they know? (laughs) Is it by osmosis? Is there any actual action that goes into it? I want you to start to think about, are there things in my life or people that complain about the same things and start to say, I am the common denominator. So I need to look at this. Now, living in the now, how do you focus in on the present. Let me tell you where your anxiety comes in. Many women come to me and they think about, oh, well, I don't know if this date is going to work because this, 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 this. They only had a phone conversation. I don't know if this person is going to work because this, 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 this. And they literally have gone far into the future. And that's what creates anxiety. Focusing on the future creates anxiety. So to bring it back to a sense of peace in the dating process, what we have to do is focus on the present. I am not here to marry you. I am not here to entrap you. I am not here to sleep with you. I'm just here to get to know who you are in this present moment to then decide if I'd like to spend another moment with you. Have you ever tried to get a girl's trip together and all of the girls went missing? Listen, sis, no more solo trips. Come join me in amazing what I call wanted women, women achieving new triumphs every day in our next experience. We take trips all around the world, from Jamaica to Costa Rica to Grenada to Bali. Sis, one thing I know, the only thing that's missing is you. So join us. Why? Because you need to relax, relate, release. If your to-do list is out the door, if you need some peace, if you need a little adventure, if you need to just have a good time, no workshops necessary, all fun, luxuriating in somebody's sun. Come on now, join me on our next experience. Click the link below to find out more. I want you to start to think about the way in which you date. I know your mama didn't teach you and that's why I'm here. Too often do we show up with this long list of long list of everything that we need and we want. And usually when you find somebody amazing, that list goes out the window. So let's do away with that list and really understand that it's about connection. Being in the present. Yes, I still want to know your vision and your future vision and all the things that you desire for your life and his life. And does that really align? But outside of that, when we're on the date, not projecting. When we focus on the past, that holds you back from your joy and your happiness. Focusing in on what was done to you before, focusing in on that trauma that is holding you back like a leash on your throat. And if you want to get out of entrapment, if you want to get out of this this feeling of not getting anywhere, we have to leave our past behind. It's a part of our story, but it no longer controls us. Then when we're looking at, okay, the future, that's when the anxiety builds up. Oh no, I can't do this. So just imagine being present. Like currently, I'm feeling real cute, right? I'm I'm feeling fabulous, sis. So I am staying with how I am right now, not how am I going to feel when I go outside or can I wear this later? None of that. Just right now, I'm feeling fabulous. Could you do that? Can you start to become present to your feelings and in your body? 
There is now I am a certified EFT practitioner and there are certain things that Chinese medicine has proven to help you just get grounded in your body. So I want you to just very simply, right, start to tap in between your ring finger and your last finger. Just start to tap and take deep breath. When you get anxious, when you get angry, when you have high emotions to just bring you back, to start to tap. Now, there is a whole exercise that goes with this, but I will share with you just one simple part. As you tap, I want you to repeat after me. I am accepted and loved fully as I am. I am accepted and loved fully as I am. Yes, you are. Sometimes the reason why we have so much stress and anxiety in dating is because we're trying to vie for the approval for someone else. Showing our best selves off like a show dog in a pony show or pony dog, a pony in a pony show, right? Like we're looking for this ribbon. But at the end of the day, I want you to start showing up as if you are fully accepted and loved as you are. Fully accepted and loved as you are. Can you do that? Take a deep breath. The first step towards love is making a decision. Making a decision that this is something that you desire in your life, despite your circumstances, despite your finances, despite your fitness, despite what you've been through, despite all of it, making the decision that you are worthy of love. You are a wanted woman. And that it's just a matter of time for you to connect with the right kind of love. Now, the question is, can you see it and do you know it? That's the problem, right? Can you see it and do you know it if it bounced you on the nose? How many times have you had a girlfriend say, oh, he's checking it out? You're like, where? I don't see it. It's time to start opening your eyes and putting away the I'll be ready when. You're ready now, sis. Now it's just for you to declare it, decide it, and act on it. So I want you to just put your hand over your heart and take a deep breath. (sighs) Repeat after me. I am worthy of love. I am filled with joy. There is room in my life for love. I am open to love. I am fully accepted and loved as I am. I am wanted. Yes. Doesn't that feel good? Now, if you actually took the time to listen to that through, you might have tears rolling down your face. Wherever you are in your journey, I honor you. I honor you. But I'm here to shift your lens just a little bit when it comes to what's possible in your love life. It is possible for you to have an amazing career, amazing business, demanding schedule, and a really great guy who's there to celebrate you and you're there to celebrate as well. You are both the prize. But how do we treat it as such? Dating is a very complicated situation, but what I know is you don't have to do it alone. So start to think about where else in my life do I use I'll be ready when? What can become non-negotiable for you in your love journey? So for me, non-negotiable is exercise every Wednesday. Very simple, right? Unless I'm taping a podcast, right? So when we, or 
or something, right? But literally a mainframe non-negotiable for me has been for the last couple months is Wednesday mornings. Wednesday mornings is my gym time. And that has helped me to keep the promise to myself. How many times are you breaking the promise to yourself? So when those thoughts start to come up, when you start to think about Will this really work for me? I want you to start to believe or to look back at your past successes where you thought, will this really work for me? And it actually worked out. The best way to build your confidence moving forward is to look at something else that you use the same skill set in skill set in, right? So love is one part of your whole person. If you can succeed in business, if you can succeed at church, if you can succeed in friendship, you can succeed in love. And if you're like, Coach Cass, I'm not succeeding in any of those. Get it together, sis. Get it it together. So I want you to start to look at what has made me successful in the past? And will, could I, could I just use some of those same skills to be successful? here? What is it? What is it that you desire? How can we make your why strong enough? For me, I tell myself, in order for me to have a child, I need to have an amazing husband who loves me and adores me. And that really, truly is supportive. And that It was my desire. I wanted someone that got me for me with every side, you know, my Jamaican uncle side, (laughs) right? To really being a a mushy, woo-woo type person to the fun person that loves to dance to reggae, right? So, and everything in between, where can I bring my whole self and just be fully accepted for who I am? But I tell you, there were tweaks that I had to make because fully me was kind of stank, right? I could still be kind of stank, right? So full me was kind of stank. So I had to work on that for my relationships, not just with a romantic man, but with men overall, right? How do you show up in your relationships? How can you start to look at what could life be like? If I didn't have to do all these things by myself, what have you currently been doing alone that you wish somebody else would take off your plate, right? So right now we're remodeling a new home and my husband is the one dealing with all the contractors and all of the things. Now, mind you, this is really stressful, right? Because of course, something always pops up and you're like, well, where's that money coming from? (laughs) What? What? Who? Do I need, do you need to swing on a pole, right? Like, (laughs) he's not trying to swing on a pole though. I don't know what's going on. Anyway, so I want you to start to think about some of the the roadblocks that continuously get you stumped in your dating life. I'll be ready when. I'll be ready when. I'll be ready to go out when I get somebody else to go with me. Are you a person that only goes out with your friends? Guess what? You're more than likely not talking to new other people. Could it be that you venture out your house by yourself to meet new people? Hmm? I want you to start to think about what could life look like if you were in a stellar relationship, one in which you woke up feeling joyous and you came downstairs and your husband was already cooking breakfast. Ooh, girl. He had a day planned out for the both of you. You went to the spa, you saw a movie, you relaxed, oceanfront, sis, come on. Romantic dinner, rose petals and all. Mm, mm, mm. I'm telling you, it's sweeter on the other side. I invite you to put down the, uh, well, he got to prove himself first. I'll be ready when he does it, sis. <laughs> I invite you to do something different, to put down your I'll be ready when 
and instead say, I'll be ready now. What can I do? And start to ask better questions to yourself that are more empowering. So is something wrong with me? Why am I not meeting anyone? It's like, wow, how can I connect with the right person for me? We have to start writing, we have to start reading, and we have to start thinking in a different way to attract real love and to put down the I'll be ready when. Get ready now, sis. Now is the time. I have had too many people pass away in my life in the last couple years to feel like it's okay to know that there's going to be a tomorrow because there may not be. So my invitation to you is to go from waiting to wanted. Start to take action in your life when it comes to love. Do something different because I'm telling you, you're someone's answered prayer and he's just waiting for you to say hello. Ah, yes, sis. Ah, yes. So what do I want you to do right now? I want you to hit the subscribe button. I want you to share, share this video, share this podcast series with 10 girlfriends or that group chat that you have. Save it, comment, and then come back next week. Keep loving, keep laughing, keep living.